Welcome to the session on Introduction to Finite Element Analysis. Finite Element method is a numerical method. When it is used for engineering analysis, it is called Finite Element Analysis. Engineering analysis is used to find any property of a system with the help of scientific and analytic principles. For example, finding the displacement or deformation of a loaded bar, finding a stress developed in a member, or finding the pressure or velocity distribution of a fluid, or finding the temperature at any point on a heated element, or conducting a vibration analysis, etc. Let's look at the methods of engineering analysis. The three methods of engineering analysis are experimental method, analytical method, and numerical method. Let's take a closer look at them. Experimental method is a practical oriented analysis, which consists of experimenting with prototypes and measures the responses like deformation, pressure, velocity, temperature, etc. The statistical data obtained from experiments are analyzed mathematically, maybe by forming some regression analysis and all. But this method is quite expensive and time consuming as it requires more resources and time. The analytical methods are the classical methods of engineering analysis, which consist of application of pure physics in real life engineering problems. They are the most accurate one in the list, but it is quite difficult to deal with the complex problems and it is limited to simple problems only. For example, finding the bending moment of a cantilever beam. One of the numerical methods used in engineering analysis is finite element method. Other numerical methods are boundary element method, finite volume method, finite difference method. Let's take a closer look at them. Finite element method is a mathematical representation of an engineering problem. Finite element method is an approximation method where finding exact solution is complex. As the name says, finite element method discretize the whole system into number of elements and try to find the solution individually and assemble them to get the final value. The boundary element method is mainly used for acoustic problems. It is only considered the outer boundary of the system. Boundary element method also uses discretization into number of elements. For the engineering analysis related to fluids, finite volume method is used. Here, each element is unit volume of the system. Finite volume method is used in computational fluid dynamics, that means CFD, which is used to solve the fluid problems with the help of computers. Finite difference method is used to solve differential equations applied at each node. It uses Taylor series or difference table to solve differential equations to algebraic equations. In this tutorial, we are concentrating on finite element method only. The finite element method uses three basic steps. Pre-processing, processing and post-processing. Pre-processing is consists of discretizing or dividing the system into finite number of elements. Let's take an example. A beam having weighting cross section is fixed at one end and a force is applied at the other end. Let it be a tension force. The whole beam is discretized into two individual elements, element one and element two. Each element is consist of end points called nodes. Now we can say the beam discretized into two elements with three nodes. Node number one, two and three. The processing phase consists of selecting the displacements at 
each nodes every individual element has stiffness matrix which is a material depending parameter these individual stiffness matrices are assembled to form the global stiffness matrix which represent the behavior of the whole system and finally by applying boundary conditions we can find the responses of the whole system these steps can be elaborate with the help of examples in coming session the post process phase consists of interpolation or approximation of the results in discretization the type and shape of the individual elements are decided based on the geometry and nature of the analysis the major types of the elements are one dimensional elements two dimensional elements axisymmetric elements and three dimensional elements one dimensional element is a line element or a beam element as figure shows the element can be represented as a line the element number is represented in a circle in this figure element number 1 each element consists of two nodes node 1 and node 2 in this figure which is marked at the end of the element one dimensional element is used for one dimensional problems only where each node can displace or deform in one direction only for example plus or minus x axis only or plus or minus y axis only each node has one degree of freedom in any of the axis so each element has two nodes so we can say that the element has a total of two degrees of freedom consider a bar which is discretized into two elements element number 1 element number 2 each element is composed of two nodes element 1 consists of node 1 and 2 and element 2 consists of node 2 and 3 two dimensional elements used in 2d problems like plane stress plane strain etc each node may have displacement in two direction say x and y direction the commonly used two dimensional elements are triangular element with three nodes they are also known as constant strain triangles or cst or also called linear displacement triangles based on the number of nodes per element triangular elements are further classified into three constant strain triangle cst which has three nodes at each corner each node has 2 degrees of freedom since it is a 2d element so therefore total of 6 degrees of freedom for single element linear strain triangle are those which has six nodes quadratic strain triangle has 10 nodes in a single element nine nodes at the exterior and one node at the interior the other type of two dimensional elements are quadrilateral element and curved elements which are used depends on the shape of the member for the analysis of axisymmetric members like shaft tank etc axisymmetric elements are used any three dimensional surface of revolution can be modeled by two dimensional axisymmetric element for the computational simplicity the most common real life engineering problems are of three dimensional members tetrahedron element which is having four triangular faces brick element and hexahedron element